Hi everyone, Spencer and Ross here. Uh, we're here to present the January-February training uh, for Target Solutions for Captains and Acting Captains. We'll be reviewing the position of Division and Group Supervisor uh, on the fire ground. The reason we're going to be reviewing this is one, it's been a while since we've had a class on this. We get a class on this in our Acting Captains, um, but after that, unless VCs and stuff are hitting that on after action reviews and things of that nature, we don't put a lot of emphasis on it. So we're going to be talking about that. Also, we have a very young officer cadre right now at PFA. Uh, you all know that there's a, a youth movement kind of within PFA. I was looking at the numbers the other day, and of our 48 captains, 20 of us, and that's myself included, have less than five years in that position. Um, in BCs, half of them have less than five years. And so we have young group being put in positions that they may not have a lot of experience. And that's fine, that's gonna happen. Um, but when, when those things come up and questions come up within those positions, we thought it was time to kind of review those roles and what is involved in those roles. Um, Ross has a great class that he put together and he's going to be talking more about that and um, we'll continue with that. Okay. So a class was created for the Acting Captains Academy several years ago. We found the need for a class on division and group supervisors, uh, not only the roles and responsibilities, but also why we have them, the definitions of both of those, and exactly what type of calls we use them on. Hello everybody, here to give you guys a class on division group supervisor. This is a similar class that we're given to the Acting Captains Academy, and this will be a, a good review for many of you and some new information for others. So here we go. The objectives of this class are gonna to be to define group and division and learn about the difference in between them. Um, talk about why do we need groups and divisions. We're gonna talk about the division group supervisor assignment. And then we're gonna talk about the division group supervisor responsibilities. So when we define division, the division is a geogra geographical division of the incident site. Um, essentially, we can use cardinal direction northeast southwest as an example of north division and this could be on a wildland fire and wildland we're, we're getting more towards the alphanumerics um, but we still use those on smaller i'd say grass fires like maybe on the eastern plains and then hazmat calls we can use north south east west um, another geographical division could be the alphanumeric side alpha bravo charlie delta as in alpha division or again, going back to wildland, you might have an alpha division and then a Zulu division to ensure you have enough room to uh, fill in for incident expansion. Or we can use floor numbers. Say on a high rise or a mid rise fire, we wanna set up divisions on the floors. We can use the division plus the number as an example, division two. Okay, now the difference in group. Remember divisions a geographical region. A group is a functional work group that is not necessarily tied to a specific location. And typically at PFA, we use, on a structure fire, we use two groups, attack group, support group. But on a larger incident or in different types of incidents, we could have different types of groups. So I have some listed here, attack group, support group, we could have a ventilation group, a search group, a water supply group, which would also be pretty common on rural fire operations, um, a medical group, an extrication group, or a rescue group as tied to tech rescue. So why do we need division group supervisors? Okay, there's a few reasons for that. First, we must have a system in place that allows the incident commander to decentralize the incident seen quickly into safer, smaller, more manageable work groups. Okay, and when we're thinking about that, we're thinking about these key tactical positions. Um, determining those positions as part of the initial incident commanders and the battalion chiefs after the command transfer is their ongoing size up. Okay, and that all boils down to span of control. Remember, span of control is having four to seven units working into you with the ideal number is five. So if we get any more than that, we're gonna be out of our span of control, which makes it hard to manage the incident. It also places strategic and tactical supervisors in key tactical locations. Okay, essentially the division group supervisors are boots on the ground for the incident commander. It gives them an opportunity to have a second set of eyes or a third, second, and third set of eyes on different parts of the fire ground. They're gonna be relaying information back to the IC. And lastly, the task and tactical level responsibility for all resources assigned to an area shifts from that incident commander, as we talk about, to the division and group supervisor officer. 
and it's up to them to communicate with command. And we'll talk about that a little more in a few minutes. Okay, let's talk about the division or group supervisor assignment. Okay, it's assigned by command either on arrival or as the incident expands. Okay, this could happen on an incident that begins pretty small and escalates to a larger incident uh, with the need of breaking down the span of control into smaller units. Division group supervisor is given your resources and tactical objectives. Okay, and then as that division group supervisor, we make sure we complete the feedback loop. So here's a sample assignment. Engine 1, you will be the attack group. Your resources are yourselves, Engine 2, and Engine 3. Your objectives are to contain the fire to the building of origin, protect exposures, and staff a 2 outline. Okay, And obviously, we complete the feedback loop on that and ensure we understand what our, what our assignment is and our resources and go from there. So what options do we have with our crew when we as a captain or an acting captain are assigned a division or group supervisor role? Okay, the first one's a crew move up, right? You have a senior firefighter on your crew. That senior firefighter now becomes the crew supervisor and takes on that unit name. If I'm engine two, my senior firefighter is now going to take over as engine two. Or a crew reassignment, which means I'm going to assign my crew to another unit and supervisor. Now let's talk about the, the radio designations that go along with that move. So the captain assuming the division group supervisor responsibilities will now have that radio designation okay? that's attached to their assignment. So if I was given a TAC group, I am now a TAC group. If I was given a support group, I'm now support group, and so on. Alpha division, Bravo division, whatever the case may be. The firefighter assuming that unit name will also as assume that radio designation. Okay? So if I become a TAC group, my senior firefighter now becomes Engine 2, or Ladder 5, Brush 37, whatever your radio designation was when you assume that group responsibility. So in a typical house fire at PFA, we run a what we call a two box residential fire, right? And the two boxes are really the groups, okay? So this shows an IC. Under the IC with them, you have the safety officer and our route intervention crew. And then we have the attack group working with the support group and then water supply in most cases, on a, on a residential in the, in the city is going to be a pretty short-lived assignment, which hence turns into the two-box two fire. Um, obviously, on a larger incident, on a rural setting, you're gonna, you could have a water supply group as well. Okay, so this is essentially what our command structure will look like for most of the structure fires that we run. So you could be attack group supervisor, support group supervisor. Now, in a little larger situation, we're talking about divisions for geographical areas, okay? So now, we've got an incident commander, and under the incident commander, a PIO and, a, and the safety officer, and then we have four different divisions, one for each side of the structure, okay? And just this, this graphic is just to kind of give an idea of where, where folks would be set up. Um, there's... There's two engines and a support company assigned to Alpha Division, two engines in Bravo Division, uh, three engines in the Charlie Division, and an engine and a support company in the Delta Division. Okay, and all those all those divisions are separate based on location around the structure. Now this this picture here is for the uh, of the Penny Flats fire from 2011. Uh, you can see the three aerials up. This was actually a a fire in which we set up divisions. And I'm going to show you the command chart on the next page. This is a great visual for what the groups would look like. And you've got to consider that each one of these aerials has an engine supplying them and other work groups around them. So here's the ICS chart from the Penny Flats fire. Um, Chief Knuckles was the incident commander. And then underneath them, we had the PIO, safety, an aid, and the rapid intervention crew. Okay, And then underneath that, we had the divisions that were created. So we had an Alpha, Charlie, and Delta division. And then we had an interior division, okay? And then we had the tower operating as its own resource. So this is a, a very good visual for what um, the command structure can look like for a larger incident where we have numerous um, apparatus working at different tasks on the fire ground. So just another visual for a more complex incident with the IC and the PIO. In this, I've got... This would be a complex incident, say at a high rise with some other structures involved, whatever the case may be. But in this one, we've got a vent group. 
We've got division three, right? Vent group is a functional group. Division three is geographical. Division four, geographical. You got Charlie division, and then we have a medical group. So a good mix there of divisions and groups, which we could have on any type of complex incident such as that. All right, so let's talk about the roles and responsibilities of the division group supervisor. Okay, the division group supervisor directly supervises the work in the division and group. Okay, and what that takes is constantly monitoring the personnel safety, accountability, and welfare of those units working under you as a group or division supervisor. That includes constant 360s. It takes you should be doing 360s every couple minutes to see what has changed and if that's going to change anything you're doing operationally. Okay. It's also your responsibility to develop an incident action plan for your group that fits within the overall incident action plan and corresponds to the other groups or divisions working or what they're trying to accomplish. The next part of that is to integrate, communicate, and coordinate with other groups and divisions. Okay, that takes constant communication. Uh, a good example is, is ventilation ops. Even on a regular two-box fire, if we have an attack group and a support group, the attack group should be communicating with the support group. If the support group is talking about doing a vertical vent operation, they should check with the attack group and have them check with their folks that are operating on the interior or talk to the truck personnel in the interior to decide whether ventilation is warranted. And that, once again, that's all in that communication coordination as well as coordinating that attack with the vertical ventilation. If vertical ventilation is needed, we want to wait until we almost have fire, wire, water on the fire or we do have water on the fire to open that roof. So that's important is that communication. It also reduces the amount of radio traffic if us as division group supervisors can have conversations that are face to face. What that does is it cuts down on the amount of radio traffic for the IC. Now, we do need to make sure that we are constantly communicating with the incident commanders so they know exactly what's going on in our groups or divisions. So the next point is to provide frequent CAN reports, conditions, actions, and needs to the incident commander to ensure we're all operating, once again, under the same strategic goals and tactical objectives that all fall in under the incident action plan. And lastly is to always be ready for a PAR, which can be called every few minutes on a, or every 15, 30, whatever the time limit is on a major incident or in a change in strategy or after a mayday call. So we have to be ready at all times as a division group supervisor for a PAR, which is, is going back to the accountability of our folks and also be ready for a change in strategy, which means we could possibly be um, having our folks um, evacuate or abandon the inside interior of the building. Okay, so here's a sample CAN report. So command, attack group, CAN report. We have fire control in the main fire unit, and we have still have active fire above. We are currently checking for extension in the Bravo exposure and sending an attack line above the fire unit. I need one more engine assigned to the attack group to serve as exposure protection and as a two outline. Okay, so in that report, I explain the conditions we have, I explain the actions we're taking, and I explain my needs, which was a need for an additional resource. So that's just a sample, and that can go a lot of different ways. Um, but it's important that you update command relatively frequently on what's going on so we can ensure the incident action plan is, is functional. Okay, these are some video exercises that will be attached to the target solution assignment that you guys will do um, as individuals or as a company when this assignment comes out. And lastly, you know, the bottom line is we, we've been having a lot of incidents lately and we use division and group supervisors a lot, more so on the group side, but we have to be ready for that assignment regardless of the incident call as captains and acting captains. So the question is, is you may be assigned as a division or group supervisor on your next fire as a captain or acting captain. Are you ready? I bet you are. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and you can contact myself. You can contact Spencer at the training division and we will uh, maybe compile a list of those questions and we'll get them out to everybody. But feel free to contact us if you have anything that you need taken care of.